Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Ned Reynolds, Mike the intern, back in the studio. It's Tuesday, and after a day of rest yesterday, back to work. <laughs> now the Chiefs have won three Super Bowls in four years. How are we going to keep this band together? Well, that will take some doing, no question about that. Are you going to the uh, parade tomorrow? Uh, no. Uh, why not? Been twice. Yeah, but Valentine's third, Day. Third time is a charm, son. I know, but Valentine's Day, small. speaking of sons, small child, makes it very difficult. All right. Okay, you'll get a reprieve this time. I appreciate that. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, yeah, it, it will be a little bit on the difficult side, but I really feel like Chris Jones, who is the key to this, who is, will probably be allowed to become a free agent on uh, March the 15th, I will suspect the Chiefs allow that and then prepare to match whatever kind of offer he gets. And I'm, he wants to stay. He's already said, I want to remain with the Chiefs. If they sign him to, of course, the franchise player, that's $32 million bucks. They can hardly afford that. Heck, their salary cap right now, the cap itself, is $24 million, And that's not a whole lot of money. And then they have Lejarius Sneed, who really needs to stay. The thing about Jones is he may not get, Mike, the tremendous offers that he's thinking he will. A good defensive end, or great defensive end, all pro. Certainly a catalyst to the Chiefs' defense, but he's also in his 30s, about to be 30 or 31, somewhere in that vicinity, and he has been plagued by a nagging groin injury that doesn't seem to go away. Does somebody want to spend that amount of money on him? So I think there are a lot of factors involved here. I have a feeling he may be back, but can they get both of them? That remains to be seen because Sneed will want to be paid off. And so will some of the other guys. Hey, the Chiefs have other contracts to sign too. So they are in a bit of a dicey situation, but they have a very good GM. Veach is an outstanding individual. Of course, you can only so go so far with the numbers, but be that as it may, we'll see what happens. I want them both to stay. Um, obviously, if we have to pick, I'm going to have to decide with Sneed. That's the guy. That's the guy I would pay every single dime I had to. Yeah. Not that I don't love you, Chris Jones, and I do, and I, I really, but you're right. You already said it. Time, that's a factor. Some of the 49ers players claim they didn't know about that overtime change. And if that's the case, I don't know who you blame but yourself and or your coaches for or not informing organization. you. Organization. Yeah. You blame the organization. That's why the Chiefs are so good. It's because they pay attention to detail, and that is a very important detail. No, it's not at the top of the list because how many times have the Super Bowl games gone into overtime? Once before this past uh, episode on Sunday. So that may not be a priority item, but it is an item that you check. So when they go out for the coin toss under the new rules, which came into effect last year, you go defense, you go offense, you see what you have to do. Well, the 49ers did not do that. And I think there was some discussion on the sidelines and they said, hey, we didn't know. Well, you know, somebody, <laughs> somebody messed up and somebody should say, you're supposed to know. Head coach, when you go out there for that coin toss, should make it clear, maybe he didn't know either. And that's a scary thing. And that's why I love my team. And that's why last year when McKinnon slid right before the goal line, sacrificed a touchdown score to win a game, it's because they trained for that stuff. Exactly. And that's how these games are won and lost. What happened to the uh, <laughs> the streakers? I never got to see it. I still I, I, I remember it happening, and I was like, streakers? No. And then the game kept pounding, and I just, it went out my mind. Well, it was only half streakers. They didn't uh, have any shirts They on. were in body suits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were, uh, hey, they had imbibed. There's no question about that. These guys had put away barley corn, whatever you want to call it. Hey, some Jack. Maybe that was what they were doing. Anyway, Nothing. they took the shirts off, ran out on the field, which of course you cannot do. And to my knowledge, they are still in jail. The NFL and the gendarmes look very unfavorably upon that kind of behavior in public. Now, was this as serious as it could be? No, because they didn't steal the ball. My favorite penalty <laughs> was <laughs> the Baltimore Colts linebacker Oh, I guess it's been about 40, 45 years ago. One of them come on the field, some some young kid running around. Linebacker broke the huddle and just 
oh god, took this kid's head off with a tremendous warm <laughs> shiver. That's a that's what do. They're not going to come out anymore. That's what you do when you have something like that. And those kids are lucky. That's not what happened to them because those players, especially on that field and on that stage, if you came near me, I'd. I'd close line all they day. They are big and they yeah. are fearsome. Yeah. We've got some really good basketball games this week. And the situation now, the, that big old boiling cauldron is really reaching a fever pick because we're getting close to tournament time for the prep schools. It'll be later on this month and then for the colleges into March and then all culminating with the national championships coming up in April. Number one team in the men, it is still Connecticut. They are the defending national champions, and they are really, really a good basketball team. Very well balanced, done a nice job with them, and they're cleaning up. The question is, have they played the toughest of competition? And that remains to be seen because they will in the tournament. Top women's team is South Carolina. They are undefeated. Or they took apart Missouri the other oh, night. they did. 83 to 45. Oh, my goodness sake. And they took apart a good Connecticut lady Husky team, Gina Oriema's ball club, took them apart on Sunday. The South Carolina team is very good. As far as the men are concerned, Purdue, Houston, Marquette, and Arizona, that comprises the top six. And as far as the ladies are concerned, Ohio State, Stanford, Iowa, Texas, also the top six. All very good teams, but really South Carolina is head and shoulders above them all. Kind of seen a little bit of a changing in the guard. Well, South Carolina's been there now for about three or four years. LSU's defending national champ because they upset South Carolina mm-hmm. in the tournament last year. But the Lady Gamecocks, Dawn Staley, who is a Philadelphia gal, I might mm-hmm. add, uh, is really a top-notch coach and a, a really good controller of all their players. She knows what she's doing. She's had great success and uh, will continue to as long as she, uh, recruits. Come on, you got to get those recruits yeah. in there. She produces too and that's that's a, that's a great coach is when you can get your players to produce for you like that. Um, who played last night? KU. Oh my goodness. If this is the number six team in America, Something's happened because they were not even in the ballpark last night. They went to Lubbock, Texas. Now they do. Kansas does have some injury problems, but when when Texas Tech, which is good, Texas Tech is a top twenty-five team, beat Kansas seventy-nine to fifty. Folks, that's seventy-nine to five zero. KU's teams don't lose like that, but they did last night. And I think Bill Self has some introspection here to do as far as his coaching is concerned because this is not a top 25 team. They got beat Duke, a winner over Wake Forest, 77-69. A lot of big games coming up tonight and tomorrow. I think the K-State Wildcats suck some of that mojo out of them a little bit. It, well, as a matter of fact, they probably did <laughs> and in beating KU like that. KU does have injury difficulties, however... Every team does. Yes, they do. All right. Uh, obviously, the Super Bowl, one of the most watched TV events across the world, and now you throw in streaming. What are the numbers looking like? Well, it's all time. This is the all time highest Super Bowl rating ever. 123 million people are estimated to have watched it. Now, the the official Nielsen figures will come out a little bit later on this afternoon, but that was the TV estimate, 123 million people at various times. That is the total uh, uh, total accumulated level of viewers who watch this thing, and that's pretty doggone good when you saw an exciting game like this was. Was it a well-played game? Well, yeah, I guess depending on your... On your perspective on things, it was not an artistic success, but <laughs> this is not a beauty contest. No. It's a football game. And the Chiefs, of course, win at 25-22 in overtime at $123 million. And, and, Mike, this is late. This was late in the evening when it, when it ended, 11 o'clock on the, on the East Coast. That's pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure the NFL and old Roger Goodell is smiling ear to ear right now. That game went to overtime either way. I'm smiling ear to ear because my Chiefs are champions again. Ned, you have a great Tuesday, and I will see you manana.